Good morning, this is Machi Mikos welcoming you to World Talks, where every word matters. More than two weeks after parliamentary elections in France, the country is still in a political deadlock with no party able to form a coalition and create a government. This, this is what Emmanuel Macron was hoping for when he shocked France by calling snap elections. Well, to discuss it, we're joined by Romain Le Cunu, Director of Europe Creative and Expert in French Affairs. Good morning, Romain. Good morning. So let's start with a bigger picture. Mm, two leading G7 uh, countries, namely the US and, and France, um, are undergoing a major political upheaval with uh, Joe Biden's exit from the um, presidential race and hard parliament in uh, Paris. Now, to, to what extent this uncertainty in um, uh, both countries is damaging Western unity amount uh, the mounting global pressure from China and Russia? Well, thank you for the, for the question. I think that it's not comparable at this stage. Um, I, I believe that in the US, you know, we are waiting for the election and it doesn't matter which candidate is going to face Donald Trump. Uh, the uncertainty is about the return or uh, the defeat of uh, president, former President Trump. In France, it's a bit different, right? And uh, we've been through um, legislative elections, general elections, anticipated ones, which were called by President Macron. And now we have a political deadline. Uh, as you said, uh, the situation is still not clear in France, um, but uh, basically we are facing the threat of uh, more than a political blockade, but institutional blockade, which is very complicated um, for France, but which have also, which has also some consequences uh, for Europe and uh, particularly uh, for um, allies when it comes to support to Ukraine. For a simple reason, France uh, is an important um, part of, uh, of the allies uh, and is the first uh, military power in the EU. And the fact that uh, France is not able you know, to have the, uh, the freedom of political actions when it comes to legislative and political decisions uh, right now because of the, of the blockade, that's threatening for uh, a lot of uh, countries and it's problematic. Now, still looking for parallels between the US and, and, and France, do you think that um, Joe Biden's decision to withdraw uh, from, uh, from the uh, presidential campaign is uh, comparable to President Macron's decision to call an early election? Because it was all designed, I guess, somehow to, uh, to, to, to limit the damage from the surge of the uh, far right. I, I don't believe so. I, I don't think it's the same. We are talking about one candidate in the US and the fact that basically if you look at the polls, uh, President Biden uh, is quite realistic when it comes to its uh, potential. Uh, I think that this decision has been taken for the simple reason that he was very, very likely to lose this fight, to lose this uh, political campaign. Uh, his health is not helping him to uh, drive a normal political campaign. It will be a very difficult one, harsh one, uh, a big fight uh, with Donald Trump, and is not able basically to, to, to achieve this success. So uh, now it's going to be another candidate and the Democrats hope for the best uh, in their election in, in, in autumn. When it comes to President Macron, is the president and he still has three years to finish his mandate, right? So uh, it's not about just, um, you know, changing the, the one personality or one, uh, or one uh, someone in the, in the political system. It was about uh, reshuffling the cards of uh, politics in France, uh, try to um, play with the oppositions, try to uh, discover basically how to revive a potential uh, project for the country. But unfortunately, as of now, uh, the scenario that most of the people envisaged for uh, the selections in France is going to matter lies. There is no majority in France today, and it's very unlikely that there will be another one uh, soon in the next few weeks or in the next few months. It's not just about the summer break, it's about um, the impossibility as of today to, um, to cooperate across the lines when it comes to French politics. And now we are heading towards a, a crisis which might, uh, you know, in one year uh, lead to new elections because this is how the state of politics in France is. All right, but is this crisis at the moment serving the, the interests of uh, President Macron and his party? Because uh, I guess few have predicted that b before the snap elections 
that it would actually uh, come out uh, that it will actually work uh, work out for uh, President Macron. It, well, he he holds the power, right? Yes, President Macron holds the power. Still, he is the president, right? When it comes to his allies in the National Assembly. Um, let's say that uh, it's not a dramatic scenario as of now because uh, they are still in control um, of key posts. And I think that last week was very important when it comes to French politics um, because it was the, nom the, the elections of uh, key posts, of top jobs, uh, let's call it like mm -hmm. this, uh, in the National Assembly. And uh, what we saw is that uh, Yael Bon Pivet, the former speaker of the of the National Assembly, managed to get re-elected. So that's you know uh, an important signal which shows that uh, President Macron and his allies um, in the Parliament are still able to drive the political game. But they were not alone to drive it. And we have to say that uh, this position, as well as um, the fact that they obtained a six out of eight presidencies of commissions uh, was obtained because of a deal, a uh, pragmatic deal with the Republicans, the moderate right, uh, because they wanted, you know, to uh, to get an agreement and to share some key positions. And the Republicans also obtained uh, vice presidencies and a, a number of, uh, of symbolical posts. And so it means that um, it's not over for um, Ensemble pour la République, so the new name of the uh, former presidential majority party and its allies, uh, they are still able to drive it. But it comes with uh, pragmatic deals. And we don't know if these pragmatic deals can lead into uh, a coalition. For the moment, uh, this deal is unique. And it's just about, you know, a very symbolical thing, which is uh, a very unique topic, which is the repartition of the posts, of the jobs. Uh, when it comes to uh, coalition discussions, for now, uh, the Republicans are saying that there is no way to do a coalition. Uh, today, they will, go in, they will, they will announce uh, a legislative pact but it's not about a coalition pact. And even if Macron's allies in the parliament were able to ally with the Republicans, still there is no sufficient majority and uh, uh, such a government, hypothetical government, would fall very quickly because they don't have the numbers, as simple as it is. And so that's why today nobody has the numbers and this elections within the parliament showed it. Mm -hmm. Now, how would you command on the situation in, in the French left? Well, the French left situation is still very much undecided as well, and this is very interesting to follow. If you look, if we come back to these, uh, you know, elections uh, of the key jobs in the in the in the parliament, you can see that uh, the left, when it remains united under this wide left alliance from the extreme left to the social democrats, uh, they are able to obtain some posts. Uh, very symbolical, but basically when the numbers are not there for uh, the central bloc, they are still able to obtain something. Very symbolic thing, for example, they managed to get the presidency of the finance commission very important position in france also giving the fact that france is going through uh, some difficulties when it comes to public finances uh, but the truth is that the left is extremely divided today and uh, uh, there is division between the different um, parties um, you can see it because they have not been able two weeks after the, the elections to uh, nominate a single prime minister candidate, for example. There have been some proposals backed by the hard left, La France Insoumise, and then some proposal from the Socialist, uh, so from the, uh, Socialist Party, but there is no agreement to find uh, you know, a consensual leftist prime minister candidate, for example. And you can see that when it comes to elections, uh, when it comes to the political balance, still the left, even if they remain united in the votes, they are not able to get anything by themselves. Again, they don't have the number to get the post. They don't have the number to form a government. That's the reality of the elections. There is no winner, simply as this. And for the moment, the coalition is still holding together because all of these parties, all of the political leaders, uh, the political apparatus believe that staying in this union will benefit from the, for them. Uh, example, if there is new elections next year, they believe that staying in the, in, the, in the coalition will help them to get better results. Basically, no one wants to kill the left coalition, but everyone knows that it doesn't work. But how is this inertia serving the interests of uh, Marine Le Pen's grouping? Because I, I guess it, it helps um, it helps the far right. 
Yes, uh, I think that Marine Le Pen and uh, the national rally in the in the in the National Assembly is basically counting, betting on cows um, just to make some gains, political gains. As of today, we know that they are the most important political party within the National Assembly. They are the most, um, you know, favored political party in France by far. Uh, and still, if you look again at the elections, internal elections in the National Assembly, you can see that the National Rally didn't obtain anything, not a single post. And so now they are talking about the fact that it's not normal, that um, they should be represented in the National Assembly, especially when they are the first you know, political party. So it's quite clever and it's quite easy for them to play with the political uh, situation right now. And I think that the situation is very clear. They are trying to uh, to have a strategy into which um, the central bloc, so the former presidential majority, Macron and his allies, uh, face uh, the left. And so they are branding this fight uh, hard left against left and that they, are, they would be the only viable uh, alternative uh, to save the country in one year in case there is new anticipated election, for example. Mm. And there is still, you know, uh, both from Le Pen and from Mélenchon, you can see that Mélenchon was talking to the European press this weekend uh, in Italy, in Spain, and he was basically portraying the situation as such. He believes that President Macron could um, uh, resign and uh, or uh, they should just wait for 2027 and he believes that Le Pen and Mélenchon will face each other and then it will be a fight uh, uh, for uh, a choice for uh, the future of France between the hard left or the hard right. Now how is this political deadlock affecting um, regional alliances of France such as uh, Weimar Triangle? Well at the moment the Weimar Triangle is of course on pause as we might mm. say. We saw that uh, there was a lot of initiative from uh, every side basically translating the fact that the stars were finally aligned between Paris, Berlin and, and Warsaw. But um, recently uh, the situation is that France is concentrated and focused on its internal politics. And I think this is the most detrimental thing when it comes to this anticipated election is that basically no matter what the situation will be in the next few weeks or in the next few months, France will focus mainly in for, on France and this is a problem for France and this is a problem for our European partners. Uh, Weimar for the moment is uh, on pause and I, I think that we, we everyone saw the declarations from uh, from some um, representatives in Warsaw for example that now that France is in this situation, uh, it will be a bit complex and uh, we should wait for a new government. We don't know when the new government will be formed or announced, how long it will sustain. And well, let's face it, uh, this, the reality is that as of today, the Weimar Triangle is uh, not in the best shape again. And Warsaw has all the, um, you know, the has all the reason to, to focus more on its bilateral relationship with Berlin. And again, the situation in Germany is not that easy either. And uh, very soon the country will enter into uh, political mode, uh, into the uh, electoral campaign, because elections are already approaching. And, you know, in one year you will have already the, uh, the campaign ongoing in Germany. So um, we can still have some pragmatic cooperation. I'm not saying that Weimar is dead, but Weimar now functions more into the technical ground between MFAs, between diplomats, mm -hmm. between civil society. But once again, the political momentum of Weimar is over because France is doing its own business right now. Romain Le Cunu, uh, Director of Europe, Creative and Expert in French Affairs, was our guest this morning. Thank you so much, Romain. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for watching and stay with us for much more here on TVP World.